Thank you so much for joining us today. I've got Paul with me and we're going to be talking about the role of data in the insurance industry. But before we dive into the questions that I've got for you, can you give everybody an introduction? For sure. So I'm Paul Basir. I'm uh, head of data for Coterie Insurance. Uh, we do small business uh, commercial insurance, uh, business owner policy, general liability, and uh, professional liability. And in doing so, uh, we are generally focused on a really micro business market. One to about 10 employees tends to be our niche. Uh, and where we use data, and I'm sure this will be more part of the conversation here soon, is that we can take as little as two answers to two questions, the business name and the address, and be able to get to a bindable policy for a business that size in less than 20 seconds. So I'm going to kind of add to your introduction, maybe, that you didn't come from the world of insurance. And so that I, that's going to be kind of my launching point for as we head into this. So coming from outside of the industry, can you share a little bit about what that experience is and maybe what you've seen other industries doing sure. with data? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. I sat on a panel a few months ago uh, where there were four of us talking about the role of data and insurance. So a similar theme to what we have right now. But what was interesting was the person to my left had eight years in operations research before joining an insurance uh, company. The person to my right had been in finance and the person two two people away from me uh, was in the military for 20 years. And for me, I was uh, in sports analytics and predictive analytics in sports for almost the last 20 years as well. Spent about 15 years uh, running a couple of different companies uh, and then did some consulting with some teams, some players uh, as an agent, uh, worked with uh, leagues and really focused that portion of my career on how to look forward, how to project forward using uh, information and technology to be able to both make smart decisions and reasonable predictions. Well, uh, insurance might be the only bigger consumer in the world of data than the sports industry. And so uh, it, it is very appealing to me to think about the same concepts that I experienced from about 2002 to 2020-ish. Um, now thinking about that, how insurance is in a really similar position to where uh, the sports market was for the last 20 years in terms of how, leverage, how to leverage data and technology uh, to really make a difference. Uh, there was a movie, Moneyball, uh, that, that tackles most of this topic um, that's focused on the 2002 Oakland A's and how they found market inefficiencies by looking at hundreds of years worth of data. Uh, I think that the Moneyball era for, uh, the insurance, for the insurance market is now. It's especially in this commercial insurance where we're talking about business insurance and finding information on businesses and trying to understand what does that individual policy look like? Uh, the perfect opportunity to leverage it is now. And I'll use one relatively quick example as to why I, I think that sports and insurance uh, are highly correlated in terms of how we can leverage data. Uh, when we used to think about projecting what would happen in a sporting event, we would look at a hundred years worth of data and say, what are some similar scenarios that have happened in the past and try to apply those to what we're going to see in the future. This happened especially during the game when there's uh, fourth down and two uh, with about uh, a few minutes left to go in the game. And there's a team, the home team potentially, that's losing by three on its own 50-yard line. What's the chance that a team goes out to win? It makes sense, logically, initially, to say, well, what's the chance that any team that's ever been in that scenario goes out to win? The advancements that were made in the sports world were to take that concept and say, well, maybe that doesn't matter as much. What about these two teams? What about that team with those players, with the, that specific instance? What are the attributes, the weather, the fans, the officials? What are the real attributes that we can that we can identify about this team in this scenario that help us project forward? It's the exact same thing in insurance. Historically, actuarial sciences look at several years worth of claims information to try to project out like homogenous groups and exposure and risk. What's going to happen in the future based off of all of these things that kind of look similar in the past. And there's not a whole lot wrong with that idea, but it's really important to drill down on what is the actual policy? What's this business? Not what are all the businesses that kind of look like it? What are all the businesses or what's this business right now have as its attributes that make it risk and really pare down on what the risk of the policy is. Finally, with technology and the significant amount of data that exists, mostly publicly available information, we can get to that level now in insurance. 
So if we're in our money ball stage then in insurance, you kind of gave us a little bit of a teaser there, but what are really like the opportunities for us kind of digging a little bit deeper into that idea of now, rather than looking at groups of people, we're looking at individuals or groups of businesses that individual business, how do we start to use the data to make those decisions? Well, well, first of all, I, well, I'd love to say that I'm Brad Pitt. I'm the Jonah Hill uh, in that example that we're talking about relative to Moneyball. Um, but, uh, and, and represent the whole idea, obviously, not the only person that, that, that's doing this, uh, but would represent this entire concept. When we think about how to take the Moneyball mentality and apply it to insurance, there's a couple of things that come to mind. One, everything that's discussed in Moneyball comes from box score information. And the box score is something that's been published in baseball since 1874 or five. It's right around there. And then there's probably some debate over which one of this, but it's over a hundred years ago, about 150 years ago is when the first box scores, which is literally like what happened in the game. The most basic information, it's all considered publicly available information that happened within the public domain. That box score information, it uh, was leveraged in Moneyball. And it took, in my experience, 17, 18 years to build a predictive model from that 2002 to ultimately where a predictive model could actually be more accurate than just using box score information before we could get to that, get to that point. In other words, just knowing some of the simplest, most obvious things, but not necessarily playing conventional wisdom against them, but actually playing uh, the details around them into the equation was satisfactory for almost two decades for the Moneyball era until some people could get a slightly better read on uh, what the likelihood of an outcome of a game is. How does that apply to insurance? It means that we don't have to have telematics. Now, telematics are the future. I'm a, I'm a believer. I get data. I want as much data. I want all of it. Totally understand that perspective. But we don't need incredibly granular uh, you know, uh, terabytes worth of information to really know a lot about a business. We just need to know a lot about the business, <laughs> meaning we do need to understand what does an underwriter usually do? An underwriter goes to Google and searches, what does this business do? It searches, what are its hours? What are, uh, how close is it to a fire hydrant or the coast? What's the general weather there? But because an individual is doing that, a, that's manual, so there's room for error, room for bias, and uh, it takes time and costs money. Um, but B, because an underwriter is sitting there doing it, it's we're all predisposed to grouping things in fairly clean groups um, and, and making decisions off of a broader uh, understanding of what a group looks like as opposed to the details about it. So what our system does, or what I think insurance is really where we're headed with, and we've seen examples of this, especially in the commercial space, or excuse me, in the, in the personal line space, uh, with, with many of the carriers that have been disruptive using data, it's really to say, challenge all conventional wisdom, what really matters. All the same data points, but what matters and to what degree, and how can we get that information quickly? So we're focusing more on the analysis rather than the collection of information itself. Taking that idea and looking at, you know, we can, we have all this information and this, I talk about this a lot with digital transformation in general. Yeah. Yes. Is it great for us to jump to AI and all of these predictive models and machine learning and natural language processing? Of course, I love that stuff. I think we should be using it, but we can oftentimes make pretty impactful differences with the data that we've got without jumping to telematics or again, making process improvements and, and those types of things along the way to get us to an incre incrementally better situation. So when we start looking at the types of data that we've got available to us today, you mentioned earlier being able to do things like provide a quote in 20 seconds. How do all of these data-driven decisions really give us the opportunity to improve a customer experience. Yeah, and I, I love this answer because that's really foundationally what, you know, where insurance has the opportunity to grow. It's really in providing for the customer. Um, yeah, the, the math from a risk perspective is critical, but ultimately, assuming we have the information and we're leveraging it appropriately, that'll solve for itself. But the customer here is what we need to, to focus on. And our kind of mentality, and you hear it throughout the industry as well, is speed, simplicity, and service. 
you know, we're not talking about incredibly, now to the business owner, they might be, these might be uh, relatively expensive policies, but we're not talking about multi, even 10,000 or more dollar policies. We're talking about something um, that, uh, that is base level coverage that all businesses should have, where we want to help those businesses make sure that they're covered. So instead of a cost necessarily, there's a few other things that they're looking for. They're looking to get through the process as quickly as possible because very few people like dealing with insurance. They want it to be, they want to make sure that they're covered. And in that case, they want to feel as though they fully trust that what we're saying we're doing is what that customer needs or what that policyholder or that business needs. And in that case, data is perfect for that. Because what might have been a process that used to take months, weeks, even days now in, in even the improvements we've seen have gotten down to days, but still is measured in days rather than in, in what uh, the jet, most other industries are, are ultimately evaluated by. Now, because the data is there, because automation is there, because we get the information that we need for a business so quickly, and we have the understood underwriting rules and heuristics that we can apply to a business once we know its core levels of information. As a small business, now I don't need to enter in a significant amount of information. I don't have to go through a laborious process. I just need to enter a couple data points, confirm a couple more, and I get to see what the quote looks like. It's a perfect user experience, either for an agent, which is obviously where most business small business insurance is still conducted, or direct uh, through any channels. The whole point when it comes to customer experience, and this is true of many different industries, is meet the customer where they are. Make it as easy as possible for the customer and through automation, through data, through technology, uh, that can be enabled. Thank you so much for joining me for the conversation, Paul. I didn't realize I was going to get quite the sports lesson in terms of uh, money, but I have to admit, I haven't seen the movie, so oh, now no. I'll have to go watch. Um, but <laughs> I am a big fan of analogies, so I appreciate you bringing that into the conversation as well as just sharing your experience and kind of where you think data is going to have a fit within the insurance industry. For anybody that is not, make sure that you're following Paul on LinkedIn and reach out to either one of us with any questions that you've got. But thank you again and have a wonderful day, everyone. If you're looking for expert tips on how to get started with your transformation or looking to hone in on your approach, make sure that you subscribe to our channel to catch our weekly digital transformation talk series where we interview experts from around the world on how to make it happen.